So again, you're going to bring your feet a little wider than your hips. And we're going to start to sway from right to left just to get the body warm. Try and go loose through the spine now. We really want to get things moving. So you want to feel the movement in the hip, the low back, the rib cage, the shoulders, the clavicles, the neck. And then we're going to take the arms a little bit higher into a side to side movement. So you add a little twist and torsion to the spine. And then coming to a right side, hold. Inhale, lift up on that side, come back. Over to the left, inhale up. Exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale. Coming to center, roll the shoulders, bring the feet in a little bit. Big movements, really go into the legs here. And then one side. Big circle, open up the ribs, the diaphragm, chest, over to the other side. And then one more time, both shoulders together. And now taking the arms forward, round the back, pull the belly in, tuck your tail. Inhaling, lift up through the legs, lift the breastbone, pull the arms to the back. Exhale, curl. Inhale, open. Exhale, curl. Remember, we don't just want the upper back moving here. You really want to feel that movement through the pelvis, low back. And make sure that you push up through the legs, open up through the front abdomen. Last one here. Open. And then coming to center. You're going to take the legs hip width. Inhale, reach the right arm up. Side bending to the left, exhale. Inhaling to center. Other side. Inhale again, left arm up. Exhaling over. Inhaling up and exhaling down. This time taking the hand just to the top of your ear, on the side of your head. Reach the elbow up, trying to get as much expansion through the ribcage as possible. Really inhale now into that. You're gonna push the other arm down to the floor. Push the feet into the floor. Try and press the head back in line with your spine. Another full breath. To then come back. To switch. Whew. Reaching the elbow up. Open up the rib cage. Press the opposite hand down to the floor and breathe. The head's retracted on top of your spine. Good morning for those of you walking in. I can't see who you are from all the way back here, but good morning. One more full inhale. Fill up the lung and exhale, return. Very nice. So taking the right leg up, tap it with your hand, opposite hand to switch. Let's go faster. Let's reach the arms up overhead. Try and get the body warmed up. Again, if it's too much to get the arms overhead, don't worry, take the hands lower. For those of you who want to work a little harder, take the foot up a little higher so your hand reaches the ankle or heel. And one more time. That's a set of eight. Three, two, and one. Taking the legs a little wider than the hips. Feet slightly turned out. You're gonna go into a squat, trying to find neutral first, right? So we're holding the pelvis not tuck the tail out, not tail in, but tail down. As you go into your squat, you fold at the hip, fold at the knee at the same time. Double check that your weight is even through your feet. So you're not all back in your heels, right? You want to feel the balls of the feet, the toes on the ground. And as you sit, you're really maintaining that length through your spine. Pressing up super slow. Try and really feel the opening of the front of the hip. The drawing in of the abdomen and then going again. Sit bones reach back. The back of the neck is long with the spine. Slowly pressing up. Really getting those muscles warmed up in the legs. Really getting that heart pumping. The heart has to pump a lot of blood to the legs, right? They're big muscles. Going down super slow. And pressing up. So we're going to go down to hold this time. 
So on your way down now, just go to a height that you know you can stay. You don't want to feel any pinching through the hips, right? So have those knees wider than your hips, feet slightly wider, slightly turned out. And really feel the, the widening of your sit bones behind you. If you feel you can go lower, go lower, as long as you're not going and rounding your back. Let's take the hands forward now, reach. See if you can become a little bit more upright with the trunk as you reach the arms forward. The toes are still pressing into the floor, the balls of the feet, the inner edge of the foot, outer edge of the foot. Feel the outer edges of your foot now pushing into the floor as you lift your body up. Take the hands all the way up over your head and bring the feet underneath you. Inhaling, lift up as high as you can. As you exhale now, keeping the hands together, roll through your upper back. Try and think again of this wall behind your pelvis, keeping you where you are. You really want to go and dive into the pool here. So reach forward, you're in your toes. I can lift my heels, that's how much I'm in my toes. And from here, scooping the belly muscles in. Bring the pubic bone towards your nose, drawing that tail down. You really want to feel your lower back lengthening out. Hamstrings, glutes contracting. Hands reaching towards the water in the pool. Open up into neutral pelvis here. And see if you can bring your body back on top of your pelvis. Trying to reach the arms up so they pull the rib cage up high out of the waist. Breathe into that nice wide open rib cage. One more breath again, a little higher, and then slowly bring the arms down, exhale. Very nice, release, 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 release. Good, so you're gonna take right foot underneath the right hip, take the left leg forward, toes point to the floor. Level out your hips, so just double check where you are. Press the foot into the ground, right foot. You wanna slowly bring that left knee up, trying not to hitch the hip up. So be conscious that your glutes working and really as you bring the knee up you're pulling your belly in up your body's coming forward right very subtly knee pulls back and up belly pulls in up forward hold if you think you can you're going to take your arms up over your head you don't want to, you can keep the arms down by your side, but think dart, right? Press, strengthen your back. One more breath, hold, and then slowly bring the foot back down, and arms come down. Left side, standing strong. Find your glute, like a tree trunk, this leg. Level out the hips, bring the toes of the right foot forward. Double check the hips again, get long, lift. Knee. Scoop the belly in, up, very subtly lean forward. You're bringing your body into your leg and your leg into your body, right? So you're not here. You really want to lift and, 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 and close. Arms up. Try and get the ribs higher out of the waist. So you feel an expansion through the ribcage. You're really pushing the ceiling with your hands. There's a lot of effort here. Pulling up through the arms, pressing down through the leg. One more inhale to then come down. Exhale, leg. Keep reaching with the arms and arms. Beautiful, good. From here, taking the legs really wide. One more. Feet are turned out. Go to a rotation that you know your knees can follow. So we don't want to have those feet too turned out and the knee not being able to rotate through the thigh and the hip with the foot. So bring the foot to maybe 45 degrees or so. Check that your knees can follow that angle. And then bring your body on top of your pelvis as if you're back against a wall. Draw the belly in, open the lungs and sit deep into a plie here. So now you're really spreading the inner thighs apart. We're gonna hold, taking an inhale. Arms come up, put them on the top of your head if that's better. Reach the elbows up, come back. And the other side, reach the elbow up and come back. Inhale, exhale, inhale. Expand and open, exhale, 
adding a rotation. Now turn to look over that thigh, circle around to the opposite thigh, to then come up to a side bend on this side to then restart. We go again, push your head up, side bend, open the ribs, turn over the thigh, circle around the front of the pelvis to the opposite thigh, hips stay square, open up to side bend, to then come back. One more each way. If you need a break for the legs, take a break. Come back and go again. Inhale. Turn. Exhale. Circle it. Inhale to side bend. Exhale back to center. Last one. Inhale. Open. Exhale. Rotate. Scoop the belly muscles in. Circle around. Pelvis doesn't move. Inhale to side bend. And exhale to center. Release arms. Release legs. Shoo! Coming back home. Good. We're going to go down to the mat, so come and take a seat. I'm out of breath. <laughs> Whew. a lot of energy in. So, we're going to start by lengthening the spine. Okay, we're going to aim towards an elbow up. I'm sorry, I said the bad word there. <laughs> but we really want to make sure we get our back muscles engaged and all the muscles of the body working for us while we do the mat work. Okay? So, you're going to bring your feet to hip width. So here. The balls of the feet are on the floor. You're going to pull your body up as tall as you can. You can use your arms here initially just to get your back upright. You're not leaning forward. You're not leaning back. Right, right on top of the sit bones. Press the balls of the feet and inner arches of your feet into the floor. Consciously put that pressure down. I want you to pull your body up a little taller. Retract your head on top of your spine. Your back muscles are working to hold you. Your thigh muscles are working to hold you. Your knees are pressing hip width. Once you feel you can let go of the hands, let go, but don't change your shape. You're gonna reach your arms forward, separate your shoulder blades. Now turn your palms to face away from you and turn your fingers towards the floor maximally. You want your maximum external rotation as possible. So you feel your shoulder rolling back. You're pushing forward, separating the shoulder blades against your back. Now keep reaching forward so you feel your whole rib cage pulling up with the arms as you lift the arms up over your head. See if you can slowly bring the arms by your ears. Have you seen how high I can lift my shoulders, you guys? My frozen shoulder is getting so much better. I've been doing elbow every single day. Try and inhale, push the ceiling, lift the ribs, breathe, squeeze your back. You go to the highest point you can with your arms. If it's here, that's your max, and that's your max. But as long as you're at your max, that's the point. You're trembling, you're breathing. Pressing the sit bones into the floor, pulling up through the crown of the head. The back of the neck feels straight. One more breath. Lift a little higher, further back with the arms. And slowly, super slow, release the arms forward, keep your body upright, and then release the spine. Oh, if you are not panting after that, you're not doing an elbow up. <laughs> you should be panting for sure. Okay, so we're gonna go into a little part, a little higher in the mid back. So you're gonna take the feet again, same position as before, but this time we're gonna take the arms wider. So, once again, use your arms, pull your body up, press the inner arches of your feet downwards towards the floor. They're not flat, they're just balls of the feet down, inner edge. Pull up through your spine, back the head up on top of the spine, and pull up through the back of the head. Once you feel you can let go, up, the arms go. Once again, palms push away, fingers point down. Full external rotation, broaden your shoulder blades. Now we're opening out to the side, but you don't want to drop the arms. You want to keep them hand about ear height, right? So inhaling, exhaling, pushing up, pushing away, feet pressing down, sit bones pressing down. You want to feel that you're creating space. Now we're working into the area of the mid back here, okay? So we're about T7, T8. Important junction here for the diaphragm. So work your breath. Keep 
working, don't let go. It's very hard. Work to your maximum. Keep pushing the balls of the feet down. Pull it up through the top of the head. Don't collapse in your lower back. Keep pulling up. One more inhale. See if you can go further with the arms. And slowly release the arms first. Keep your body tall, super slow. And then release the spine. Wonderful. So a lot of us have been complaining through this, uh, well, not just the quarantine period, but all the time that of, our, of our posture and the tension in our upper back and our neck. This is because sometimes our upper back gets quite stiff, right? So we wanna make sure that we're getting ourselves out of that kyphosis, right? The bad posture where our ribs collapse on our organs and the belly sticks out. And then it really, congests the stomach, congests the diaphragm. We can't breathe, we get acid reflux, we get all kinds of problems. So we wanna make sure that we're always lifting out of that kyphosis, working the area of the mid-back. So one more elbow up for that mid-back, crossing the legs. I did promise mat work, it's coming. You're gonna see your mat work is gonna flow so well after this elbow, I promise. If you can't sit cross-legged, you can go into a more diamond leg shape, no problem. <clears throat> The goal really is to think of pushing the knees down into the floor. So if you just do that first, push, 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 you're gonna feel your glutes almost contract, pulling the pelvis down. And that's what you want. The elbow was there to create space. So you've gotta have that anchoring down to then be able to pull up, right? So you're gonna think, pull down through the knees. There's a lot of effort here. And then we're gonna go and pull up T6, up T7. We're gonna take the arms in a prayer position, okay? The whole palm in contact. Reaching the arms forward, spread your shoulder blades. Pull your body up and long, top of the head pushing to the sky. Now you're gonna go and bend those elbows and bring your hand right up above the crown of your head, as far back as you can get it. Open the elbows. Now we're gonna try and lift the ribs up. So T6 up, off T7, knees pulling down. As you reach the hands as high up above your head as possible, you're trying to pull your shoulder blades, pull the ribs up with it, right? With the hands. Breathe. Remember, if you can get your arms by your ears, do so. If you can't, you're squeezing your forehead or your cheeks. The highest position you can get to, elbows locked as best you can. Pull those knees down. It's easy to the, the knees come up with the legs, well, with the arms. Pull down, pull up, head back. Breathe. For some of you remember Mila. Mila was teaching at our studio. She's now in Switzerland. She's joined us a couple times. She's requested for some elbow us. So Mila, here you go. If you're with us today. Wonderful teacher. If you get to follow her on Instagram, she's posting some wonderful posts. One more breath. You can do it. Don't give up. Remember when you let go out of an elbow, it's super slow. You don't want to snap your system. So one movement, then another, then another. Beautiful. Okay, get yourself a little bit of water if you need. Otherwise, we're gonna just jump straight into some mat work, okay? All right, so you're gonna roll back down. One vertebrae at a time. Take your time to get there. Bring the knees in. Now we're gonna put our elbows on our knees to activate the anterior chain, so front muscles of the front of the body. So that way we get as much length out of the low back as possible, okay? So you're gonna put elbow against knee, palm faces you. Let's do that on both sides. Here your back should be flat, okay? Because we're not neutral. The goal here is to try and open up the fascia of the lower back. Flex your feet, push the heels away. Now, we're gonna bring that chin in slightly. Don't lift the head too high. We wanna have the head on the floor, pull the chin in and that's it, no higher than that. Now, with your knees pulling in against your elbows, you'll feel your back flattening and your tailbone pulling in a way slightly up so that you get more length out of the lower back. Pull those knees into the elbows, elbows act as a wall, pulling the shoulders down to anchor, right? Now every breath you take, you're trying to draw the belly button towards the spine. 
Try to reach that tailbone a little further away from your head and up. One more breath. And then slowly, head comes down and the arms and legs relax. Finding the sacrum on the floor now. That means you're returning to a more neutral curve. Make sure that you're not popping the ribs down. So ground the rib cage and bring those knees right above your pubic bone. Feet level with the knees. Inhale, lengthen through the back of your neck. Now exhale, curling out. Try not to change the shape of your pelvis. That belly is drawing in. You haven't flattened your back. You're now neutral. Lengthen the arms away. Those of you with back problems, you can put your feet down. Yeah, both of them. Or work more towards an imprint of the back, a little bit farther. Reaching the arms, pull the arms, the shoulders down, pop. Let's go, inhale, for five. Exhale, five. This is a breath work exercise. Cleanse your lungs. Don't think abdominals, think breathing. Inhale, expand your rib cage. You want to feel the pump. Exhale, pull the belly deeper and squeeze every atom of air out of your lungs. The motion of the arms really activates all the muscles around the rib cage, of course, and the core. But we really want to challenge those muscles, right? So pump those arms vigorously. Now my left arm is going to go rotate that way. But think up 
over your head, circle. I'm gonna bring my elbow back. Inhale, pull your two hands further away from each other. Grow tall, exhale, squeeze your waist. Now make sure your legs are equal length. Twice more. One more. Inhale, arms come up overhead. To exhale, square yourself to the front. Breathing in, lengthen your spine. Breathing out, point your toes, scoop the belly in and roll back. Now once your lower back meets the floor, bring those legs up and now you're going to reach the right leg away. Right hand to the inside of the ankle, left hand to the outside of the left knee. Zip the belly in deep, press the leg down, 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 open up through the psoas and switch. Switch. Now the knee that's coming in, pull it in and squeeze the air out of your lungs. And switch. 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 Every exhale, you're, you're really sealing the waist. One more. Now, hold the legs parallel. Take both hands up and reach. Take them outside the two knees. The two knees are squeezing together. Inhale here. Exhale, lengthen out through the arms a bit more and reach. Belly pull deeper. One more. Up over the knees to go to the other side. Squeeze those knees together. Zip the belly in and go deeper with the exhale. One more. Up over the knees. Grab the right leg, lengthen the left leg away, and pull. Relax your shoulders here, deep in the belly, and switch. Grab the shin or calf. Switch. Switch. Lift the leg up towards the ceiling. From here, we're going to roll down through the spine. Try and keep the activity in your thighs. Now, for beginners, you can keep one leg down for this exercise. We're going to be lowering the leg and lifting it back up. Advanced, your two legs are up. Once you're here, slowly pull that chin in, roll up again. Take the hands to the forehead or behind your head if you have the fit. Lowering the legs down, you want to really zip the belly and only go as far as you can keep that length through the lower back. So sit bones reaching away. Up and repeat. Up. Exhale. Squeezing the legs firm. The legs are tight. And one more. And up. Bending the knees. Keep the curl in your spine. And remember, elbow to knee, knee to elbow. You want to get that anterior chain working. So then roll up through your spine. Just seeing if you can lift up. Find a long spine. Tip back. And then think the base of your spine, little curls. You treat this J. Find your balance by bringing the heels to your bum and knees towards you. So think again, elbow to knee, knee to elbow. It helps do this position and hold. Those of you who are more advanced, you're letting go, trying to balance. The legs are open in a V. If you think you can, lengthen one leg. Or both for the more advanced. You're still thinking elbow to knee, knee to elbow. You want to maintain that hold through the anterior chain. You're not hanging up your legs. So open leg rocker here, prep. Find the core, zip the belly in. Remember, you're creating a bowl for your cornflakes. Hollow out. And then slowly bring the legs together, bend the knees. And now just put the tips of your toes on the floor. Hold the length in your spine, bring the arms back. And now twist, knees to the floor, and together all the time. Open the waist, scoop up through the belly, and go the other way. More advanced, you're kicking the left leg long, squeezing the knees together to twist to the right. Coming back up, right leg long to twist to the left. Coming back. If not, both legs up, twist, and up, and twist. And up. Release the legs. Release the spine forward. Head between your knees. All right. So on our tummy, you're going to come up first on your elbows just to open up that anterior chain that we've worked. For some of you who have that sensation of uh, tight solar plexus or that um, uh, 
uh, acid reflux, like nausea, sometimes it can create. This is where you get your chance to really remember, breathe and open the front doors here at the front of the ribs. So inhale, expand, open, exhale, just relax. Don't squeeze. Now I want you to imagine now somebody's pulling your legs backward, and at the same time, your solar plexus or belly is pushing a ball that's sitting underneath your rib forward. Right? So you're trying to create traction out of your lower back. Legs reaching back, ribs pulling forward out of the lower back. Your arms are pulling the mat backwards, the shoulders are back. Soften the neck now, chin rolls to one shoulder, and down and across the chest, chin rolls to the other shoulder, down to the chest to stop, come back to center, and slowly come down, spread your elbows. Now we're gonna go into an activation for the lower back. Some of you have really asked for some um, stabilization work and deep, uh, deep lower back muscle work. So we're gonna do that first to really wake up those muscles to then go into the pure mat work, okay? So the whole way those muscles are working for us and not against us. So before you begin, bring the feet and legs hip width. So the kneecaps are pointing towards the floor. And I want you to be very conscious of the whole pelvis being on the ground. You want to feel the hip bones and the pubic bone, roughly, and the lengthening out of the lower back. If you lengthen too much, so if you tuck your tail, your hip bones lift off the floor. That's not what you want. Anchor the hips, anchor the pubic bone. Now stretch your legs very subtly. Just get that anchoring and activation now through the back of the legs, crease of the bum. And now we're going to put the fingers just on either side of the lower back. So you feel your musculature. Notice when your legs are taut, the muscles feel strong. Now just slowly release your legs and notice the muscles in your lower back softening. You can rest your head on the floor. And now we're gonna go and work only the right leg. So anchor your hips, find your core muscles, so think a little bit of pelvic floor. Think of your 20% pelvic floor here, right? You don't wanna go and grab the belly. Reach the right leg long. Now you can't see me moving, but I'm imagining somebody's pulling my right leg. You should feel the left low back kicking in. Release, and do it on the other side. Four, 20% pelvic the floor. Lengthen the left leg, and you should feel the right low back kicking in. If this doesn't happen, you're probably lifting the leg or working the leg too hard. You need to back off, Let's go right leg again, and make it more an intention to move the leg, not literally a movement or a lift. And you just want to feel the opposite side low back kicking in, super subtle. Left leg. And sometimes one side of your back dominates, right? So if you, whether you do right leg or left leg, it's always one, the right side of your back that kicks in, or, or vice versa. But we want to tell the dominant side to back off, so you've got to soften up. We want to wake up the side that doesn't like to work. I'm going to give you a chance to just try that one last time. Subtle, subtle lengthening of the leg. More intention than movement. You want to feel the contraction under your fingers. Beautiful. Now that we've got the muscles woken up, we're going to go back to the two leg lengthening way. Hold. You should feel your core working here. And now reach the arms long by your side, turn your nose to face the floor, lengthen through the neck, shoulders roll back. So roll those scapula together slightly and think of your dart. You're trying to pull your body apart. Inhale, exhale, inhale. You wanna feel your ribs pumping you up a little higher, minutely. The goal is not to backbend. The whole goal is to pull yourself apart instead. Now we're going to reach right leg up. Crease of the bum does the work. And switch. Left leg up, right leg comes down. Crease of the bum does the work. Your pelvis doesn't move. Your trunk doesn't move side to side. You want to feel either side of that lower back kicking in. And if you found that your one side was a little weaker, 
Why don't you do a few extra on that weaker side? Now those of you who are okay with this and want to work harder, you can go into full swimming. So you're taking the arms out in front of you. Now my shoulder won't allow me to lift the arm here, so I'm going to do the best I can to demonstrate. But you want to go into that dart, but a little bit higher. So drag that floor in with your arms, pull the shoulders back and lift the legs. And now let go, see if you can keep your height. So I'll demonstrate with my good arm, opposite arm and leg, and then you switch. You're breathing in for five, out for five. You can also do it with the arms down or just arms hovering. One more breath. And then inhale, pause. Exhale, slowly release. Well done. Good. We're gonna go into swan, bringing the hands right by the rib cage today. If you know your back is um, stiff or pinchy, no worries, take your hands out. Even slightly above your head is fine. The cues will be the same though, okay? So spread your fingers, really feel the whole palm of your hand against the mat, and wrap those elbows back and under. Whether you're here, elbows under, okay? So once you're here, your upper back is engaged. Lengthen those legs, activate through the lower back, and then peel that chest up. I want you to see if you can find a height where you can let go. I want your muscles in your back activated. Squeeze through the shoulder blades, elbows together, let go. Then try a little higher. Activate your legs. Squeeze, let go. Can I keep the height? And then when you feel your back engage, you keep that engagement as you press into the whole palm of your hand to come up. Shoulders are back, your elbows are squeezing in, your back muscles are engaged. Now through a firm abdomen, not a floppy belly, release, but think, keep your back muscles engaged and raise your legs up. Can you let go? That's the goal, right? So again, press into the palms, lift up, exhale down, don't let go of your back muscles. Can I let go? Keep going. Those of you who are more advanced, you're letting go sooner. One more, up, and then snake your way down, and release. Well done. Huh. I have to talk through all of that. <laughs> okay, so going into rocking, you have the choice here of doing one leg at a time. If you're doing one leg, one hand comes out above the head, and you go and grab the foot. If you can't grab the foot, you can use a belt, a towel wrapped around the ankle, hold the towel, or just activate. Don't hold the foot, just reach the hand towards the foot. You can even do both sides, okay? Otherwise, one-legged rocking, kick the foot into your hand and pull up, and breathe here three times to then switch. If you're doing both legs, grab both, kick the feet into your hands, shoulders pull back, Inhale into that solar plexus, that place that sometimes can give a bit of nausea for some people. Let's kick. Use your legs. Kick. This is tough for me because my quads are very tight. One more. Slowly bring it in. And release. Well done. Hands come back to the ribs, pull the chest up, push into your hands and knees, and come into a child's pose. So knees open, feet together, sit back, and slowly walk your way down to release. Good. So we're gonna finish with a mermaid. We're gonna bring the legs to a mermaid position here. We're gonna work this into pigeon. So if you can, I, I know I faced you, I want you to see if you can face lengthways on your mat, so that way we can work into pigeon. If this is not good for you, please bring the feet closer together, knee on top of knee, or you can just sit in a cross-legged position. Once you're here, work the hip 
down or sit the bones down into the floor as best you can and bring your body upright. Reach those arms forward. Take a breath in, reach up over the head. As you breathe out, you're going to go and bring the, right, the left hand to the right knee, cross your center, and lift up to the left. All right, did I say right hand to left knee? Then it's going to the right. One more breath. Inhale, lift, exhale, bring the opposite hand now to the floor, reach up through the arm, bend the elbow that you're supporting yourself through, and lengthen as far away as possible. Now we're gonna circle around the front of the legs to then come across to the first stretch that we had, up, opening the ribs to the sky, to then rotate, reach across, far forward as possible, circling the arms, support yourself hand on the floor to then open the ribs to the sky. One more time. Up, inhale, down, around, reach as far as you can. Up, inhale, and back to center. Now, if you've got your right leg in front, you're taking the left leg behind you, pigeon. If this is not good for your knees, please do not do this exercise. You can sit it out or you can do double pigeon where you're bringing your right leg and foot up over the knee to then bring your body upright to stretch through that glute. Or just again, cross-legged, you can lean forward to stretch the glute. If you're doing full pigeon with me, you're here. Try and lift this foot up, turn the knee out and square your hips as best you can. Now I'm holding myself. We're doing an active pigeon. So squeeze up through the pelvic floor, up through the low belly, lift and lengthen your spine. I'm not trying to go backwards, I'm trying to lift, okay? So I'm pushing my legs, my knee into the floor and the back foot into the floor. Hold, reach the arms back. If you want, come forward with me, challenge the muscles. You will see fascially, you will get an active stretch. And then come up, we are strengthening and lengthening here. Down, up, one more down, up. And see if you can sit back, return to your mermaid. See if it's a little bit more comfortable. Cool, eh? <laughs> Switch to the other side. So choose the same position you had for the other side. Work that sit bone down. You're gonna go and lift the arms up over your head. Inhale. Right hand now, oh no, left hand now to right knee. Reach up and over. Inhale. Exhale. Up. Switch, hand to the floor. Bend the elbow so you can come long out of your waist. You don't want the hip following you. Bring the anchor down the sit bone. Now we're reaching forward, rotate, circling the arms around the legs, over to the other side, open the ribs to the sky, inhale, exhale, circling around. So notice how this is prepping the glute, right? Really opening up into those hips and glutes, as well as the obliques. This is your last one to come up into active pigeon. So again, choose the position you had before, whatever works for you. If not, you're coming up to an active pigeon, pressing the back foot into the floor, and this knee also into the floor to lift you up. Kegel, lower belly in and up. Open the chest, inhale. Exhale, go long, flat back. Squeeze your back. Inhale, open and lift. Exhale. Remember, it's not a back bend. It's a lifting up and away, right? One more. Inhale. To exhale, slowly come down. Sit into mermaid, see if that's a little better. Well done. So we're gonna finish with a small meditation today. I want you to find a position that's comfortable for you. For some, it might be cross-legged. For others, you might want to take your blocks 
and sit on your blocks. For me, this is my preferred position. So you straddle the blocks, kneeling, and find your two sit bones. Well done. Now I want you to just become aware of where you are on your sit bones before you do anything. Ground yourself so you feel like you're on the center of your pelvis, right? You're not forward near the pubic bone or too far back on the tail, right in the middle. Bring the rib cage on top of that mid line and the top of the head, chin parallel to the floor. Turn the palms up, rest them on your legs, and tell those shoulders now to fall. And I want you to just be aware of your breath. Right now we've been working hard, so the breath is moving fast. I don't want you to try and control it. I want you just to observe and feel the rush of warmth, the blood running through your veins, feeding every cell through your body that has worked. Consciously walking your mind through your body to find any points that might be holding on. Rather than think, let go, I want you to think, ground yourself, get heavy. Feel the weight of your bones underneath you. And start to bring your awareness now to smoothening the breath out. Picture a sponge inside your rib cage, that being your lungs. And you're just pouring the air, like a, you're pouring water out of a teapot, into that sponge. So you absorb the air into your lungs and into your body, into all your cells. And as you exhale, you're not squeezing the sponge anymore. You're just letting the water seep out, so the air seep out. Nothing is forced. It is happening at such a gentle pace that the breath actually becomes very silent. You can't hear yourself inhaling or exhaling. You let that sponge fill up till it feels saturated. So that way there's a natural tendency or allowance for the air to just naturally seep back out. And notice how this allows you to ground a little deeper into the floor. You are organic. You are fluid. Notice the fluid systems running through you. There's constant movement in your body. The fluids running through all the fascia, which is also fluid. So if you are dehydrated, you won't feel that fluidity in your system. You want to feel that, like a current running through you. And as if you're floating in the water, you feel the currents underneath you. It's the same feeling when you let go. Taking a nice breath in now, ready for OM, bring the hands to your heart, exhale, the 
Preparing now for all inhale. Oh. Namaste.